Hello everyone, I'm the Gaming Beaver, and today we're going to be talking about what, of course, Jurassic World Evolution! There was an interview published where Michael Brooks, the game director, was asked a couple of questions and gave them answers. So what we're going to do is, of course, look through the news and the many tantalizing juicy bits of information that we can sort of pluck from this to do with the game and maybe how it's going to play out and how that in total is going to affect the overall game. So what I'm going to do here is read off some quotes and then I'll give you my thoughts. So the first question right away was to do with Jurassic World Evolution's take on dinosaurs breaking out and of course dino disasters. And Michael Brooks had this to say. But when things go wrong, the stakes are always high. A running theme in novels and films is small things quis quisly <laughs> is small things quickly escalating. And we want you to experience the same kind of creeping emergency when you play our game. Storms, power outages, dinosaur breakouts, and even espionage are among the problems you'll have to deal with. Each disaster is quite manageable in isolation. But the challenge comes when a single emergency is left unattended, and it cascades into another, and another, and another. But we want you to have time to build and explore your park as well which will make those moments when you're under threat even more gripping. So it appears to me that, I mean, if you go off Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, we have the same sort of threats. We have the, uh, well, hurricanes for a start. And of course, dinosaur breakouts, which are always a thing. But for the first time, we seem to have espionage. And that was something that was present in Jurassic Park, when you had Biosyn bribing Dennis Nedry to get the dinosaur embryos off the island. However, it doesn't seem like Biosyn have really resurfaced at all in the Jurassic Park franchise in recent years. And this could be due to a company actually existing called Biosyn. And they probably don't want to taint an actual real life company's name by making them this greedy corporation that's just after stealing other people's hard work. So maybe we won't see Biosyn return, but a corporation under a different name. Hoskins Corp or something like that. And one thing that we as Jurassic Park Operation Genesis players, or people who like uh, building simulators or zoo tycoons as a whole like to do, is just enjoy the park. With Operation Genesis, sometimes it kind of overwhelmed you with the amount of viruses that were going around and dinosaurs that need healing. You couldn't really take any time to enjoy the park before something else had cropped up before a dinosaur had broken out, or gastric poisoning had wiped out all of your herbivores. As far as gameplay goes for Jurassic World Evolution, I don't really know what to expect. I don't know whether we're going to see something similar to Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, or something quite similar to their Zoo Tycoon title that they released, well, Frontier released not too long ago. I really want it to be its own experience, and trying to handle multiple threats at once could make for some interesting gameplay. Brooke goes on to add this. If a ride breaks down in Planet Coaster, which is another game they've created, it costs you money and time. If an electric fence breaks down in Jurassic World, well, you've seen the movies. And harping back to that good old Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, we all remember that if a dinosaur breaks out, it really isn't a problem. You can just instantly repair the fence and send out a helicopter to sedate and recapture that dinosaur. We've seen a hint towards something like this in the first Jurassic World Evolution trailer, where the T-Rex breaks out and ends up killing some people. Now, of course, this isn't gameplay footage and more or less how they want to represent the game. So if a person dies, we can assume, just like in Operation Genesis, that you have to pay a certain amount in compensation. Surely that would make bad press as well. It'll be kind of interesting to see the way that Frontier explore these different avenues. Maybe after an incident like that, you have to prove to the public that your park is safe and that's not going to happen again. Stuff like that would be really interesting to see. And Brooks goes on to a different topic here. You'll be given missions by the Hammond Foundation Security, Entertainment and Science Divisions, and it's up to you which opportunities you take. And then Andy, the person who wrote this article, you could build a park that tries to appease all three divisions, but you'll soon discover that their goals conflict. They have competing personalities, and they'll demand different resources from you, which they do through contracts. So we've seen in the past that there's going to be a science, a security, and an entertainment. And according to Brooks, this isn't some Something that we're going to easily max out all branches with. We speculated that maybe if you go down one path, it would unlock a certain dinosaur or even a certain attraction. But there's something that I think we've overlooked and it's staring at us right in the face. And it's the fences. Get, get his concrete evidence that it's probably made out of concrete. So in this image, you can see that the fences surrounding the hatchery are made of solid concrete. Relating this back to the three trees, it could be possible that this is for security, meaning that there's less chance of the dinosaur escaping, but at the cost of entertainment. 
meaning that visitors cannot see the dinosaurs while just walking around. They have to go inside a viewing vent to see them. And maybe maxing out your entertainment branch will grant you more of the classic electric fences, but as seen in the trailer, it's not too great for security. Meaning that if the power goes offline, the dinosaurs can easy break out. And maybe they have other problems too. We just don't know at this point. But for me, that's safe to say that that's one of the things that might be affected. And something that we've kind of overlooked. Back to the interview. He goes on to say this. But our job is very different from the work done by the film artists, because they know exactly how the viewer will see their dinosaurs, and can frame them very specifically. But for us, Jurassic World Evolution's dinosaurs have to feel alive from every angle. Luckily, our art and animation teams really understand how to bring them to life and give them personality. And this is something they're showing us through the different dinosaur profiles. So far we've seen Ceratosaurus, Triceratops, Stegosaurus and even Ankylosaurus, really highlighting how much work they've done when it comes to the modeling, rigging and animations. Which I gotta admit look really impressive. The interview goes on to talk about park life. Another challenge will be running multiple parks. No matter how far you advance through the campaign, you'll be able to revisit earlier islands to complete objectives, care for your dinosaurs, or build bigger and smarter. So it seems like there's gonna be a campaign, so this is the first time we're having confirmation that that's gonna be the case. But throughout this campaign, it seems like you're gonna have major objectives. And by completing those said main objectives, you'll progress the story. Obviously unlocking different parks, attractions, and probably even different dinosaurs. So to me, this seems to suggest that we're going to unlock the different islands as we go. Obviously, you would imagine starting with the smaller islands and then moving, of course, to the biggest, which would be either Isla Nuba or, you know, if you're talking about mass, then Isla Sauna. But of course, that could be saved for a whole Site B affair. He goes on to say advancing through the game will unlock new research and dig opportunities, which will open up new bioengineering possibilities. So by returning to an earlier park, you can add or change dinosaurs and earn rewards. Bioengineering is one aspect aspect of the game that sounds particularly interesting, allowing you to create your own dinosaurs. But Frontier is keeping the details of this system close to its chest, stating, we want evolution to be the ultimate fan game. So whatever you do, you'll be unlocking lore, material, and discovering easter eggs drawn from the novels and movies. Which seems to suggest that if we eventually unlock Isla Nublar, maybe we'll find the part with the uh, upturned explorer by a tree, or even the old visitor center. And along with this, we actually got two bright brand new images. We got the Triceratops facing off against the T-Rex, which we did see in the first trailer, except for this is a cool sort of low angle shot as if you're in the field. And the second one is a much more grandiosa wide shot, showing Ankylosaurs, Edmontosauruses, Brachiosauruses, Apatosaurus, and even Parasaurolophus frolicking in their brand new exhibit. So one thing I'm hoping for is that we're actually going to be able to terraform the land. That's something that we could do in Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, but not in other games like their Zoo Tycoon title. All you could do was play certain things in a preset park. I'm not too worried about this when it comes to Jurassic World Evolution. If you look at the right of the image, you can see a fence curving around some trees, which seems to suggest, just like in Genesis, you can build your enclosure to the exact size and even shape that you want. Another thing to note is the hatchery on the left, or at least I assume it's the hatchery. I feel like I've seen development photos of this before, where maybe we'll get a little baby dinosaur in that sort of circular enclosure, and then when the dinosaur's fully matured, it'll walk out when the gates open. But what's even more interesting to me is these two buildings by the bottom. They seem to be exactly the same, but we don't have any real clue as to what these are. And something that we need to know is how our visitors are going to view the dinosaurs. And I'm presuming that these buildings take the place of the viewing vents that we had in Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. One of the more basic attractions. So this might be the first way we're able to get our visitors to view our beautiful dinosaurs. Also, a little thing to note, in the bottom left you can see what seems to be maybe some path? Either that or it's part of the viewing vent. But really, we skipped over the fence thing. That alone, being able to make straight fences, as I'm presuming you can barely just see in the top left, off in the distance, is a straight fence, as well as curved fences, really opens up the possibilities of personalizing your own enclosures. And I really, really do hope that we can terraform here. It's something that kept Jurassic Park Operation Genesis alive. You really felt like you could create 
your own personalized island. Don't want fences? We'll just have hills everywhere and have people in uh, those big tower things. <laughs> but I mean, that remains to be seen. So also someone on Twitter actually tweeted at Nick Rogers, who's the head of animation, if these were Dilophosauruses, which he replied to saying that he's almost 100% sure that those aren't Dilophosaurus. Even though if we zoom in on the image, it does look very close. I mean, the head crest alone is almost spot on for the silhouette. Fuck, now... Hello? What's that? Oh no! It turns out it was a Dilophosaurus! <laughs> Nick Rogers just put out this tweet, kind of apologizing, saying that, you know that thing? Y yeah, it's, it's Dilophosaurus now. So that's that sorted. But going back to the article where they talk about bioengineering, is it really possible that we're gonna make our own hybrids? Jurassic World wasn't the first to do hybrids. I mean, you had the Chaos Effect toy line for the Lost World, which had their own hybrids. I think there was a Pterosaur and Velociraptor looking thing, as well as some other ones. But from what I remember of Frontier Expo, was that we're not going to be able to create our own hybrids, which is a bit disappointing to some people anyway, <laughs> me included. But at the same time, this is a Jurassic World evolution game, which has to stick quite closely to the lore of the film franchise. So maybe we won't be able to make our own Indominus Pterosaur hybrid, but we might be able to change the way our dinosaurs look in the form of skins or even the different tech branches like security, entertainment and science that we talked about earlier. And just before we go, apparently on the Jurassic World website, the Mosasaurus has been changed from missing to endangered. Have they found it or what? We have no idea what this means. Is it possible that Universal made a mistake and like, oh no, we've, we've actually spoiled that bit in the movie where they go, wait, the Mosasaur's missing? Or maybe they're just doing it to mess with us. That's actually quite a likely scenario. But if we go back to that other image, which shows the T-Rex roaring at the helicopter, I miss something. In the bottom right, you can quite clearly see that that's a bit of the Mosasaurus enclosure. So this scene must take place on Isla Nublar. And if this is the Mosasaurus enclosure, then it means that the Mosasaur, did it even actually get out of its enclosure? Or did it come back into it? We really don't know. However, it's almost 100% confirmed that this is going to be that scene where the Mosasaur jumps out and tries to take a jump at the helicopter. So this hints at two possibilities. Either the dinosaur rescue mission takes 24 hours for going from morning to night, to complete, or they make a second journey to Isla Nublar. For, for God knows reasons. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. Just some quick little information. I just kind of wanted to get that out there because some more Jurassic World and the Evolution news and we have to cover it. Because as soon as it comes out, I'm going to be playing this thing non-stop. I haven't been this hyped for a game in such a long time and I can't wait to get my hands on it. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Oh,